Hello, 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 everybody. Welcome to Restoration Through Laughter. Once again, thank you guys for tuning in. I'm your host, comedian, evangelist, Delightful Kate. We have a great show once again for you guys, some awesome nuggets. And we are so elated to have these special people coming on and sharing their testimonies um, of how God has restored them. Of course, homework is first. Want to thank you for tuning in to WYTV7 Christian Broadcasters Network, Inc. And we are wanting you to help us with God's vision. So we want for you to get on, follow us, let us know if anything that's said or done touches your heart, and also help us along the way by donating. $5 goes a long way, so we ask that you would please uh, help God's vision to continue. Also, um, we will be doing a uh, commercial and give you an opportunity to get a uh, free book and a t-shirt. If you donate uh, $20, you'll get a book. If you donate $10, you will get a t-shirt. If you donate $30, you'll get both, and it'll be shipped out to you from one of our uh, awesome guests that we had on. Um, and her, she's an author, and so her name is Renee Jones, and she is giving that gift to you through uh, Restoration Through Laughter. So we're excited. We're going to go ahead and introduce who we have in the building today, none other than author, publisher, Brandy Hunt. How are you today? Hello, dear. I'm good. How are you? I'm doing well. It's so great to have you on today. Um, first of all, um, just want to thank you for taking out time and your busy schedule to be on with us, but we would like for you to give us a little bit about you Tell us about your ministry and your um, your family life. Okay. Well, as you've already stated, I'm Brandy Hunt. I'm author, publisher, uh, mother of a 17-year-old. Keep me in prayer. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, my, my ministry life is just to see people living out their purpose and their calling and their destiny through Jesus Christ, period. Um, a lot of people are hurting. A lot of people are bound up in things that they don't even have any idea why they, how they got there or how they can get out. And so my life's mission is to help people identify both how they got there and how they can get out. Wow, that's awesome. So I know uh, just from going over uh, information, excuse me, guys, um, I was reading about you being the founder of Pure Women. You're also um, a publisher. You're also an author of a book called Dealing with the Hand That I Was Dealt. Could you tell us a lot of uh, some information about how that book came into fruition? Oh, absolutely. Dealing with the Hand I Was Dealt is my baby, will always be my baby. It probably will always be my favorite book. And the reason why is because it's the one that God used to birth so many other things. Um, dealing with the hand I was dealt is uh, my life story about losing my father to suicide when I was 12 years old and the downward spiral that my life took trying to find love, trying to find peace, trying to find joy, trying to find that, you know, that embrace from a male perspective. I mean, we judge women so much about doing that, but they're, they're missing something. And it's not just, you don't just wake up and feel unloved. You are unloved by somebody, whether it was male or female, but mine was male. And so I, my story pins the journey of pretty much a lot of bad decisions. And then on top of other bad things happening to me, I found myself making bad decisions based on people leaving me. So based on rejection and abandonment, I don't want to have to go through that again. I already lost my father to suicide, meaning the man that was supposed to love me the most didn't. So I don't know why I'm out here trying to convince somebody else to love me, but that's what the human, your human nature tends to send us on paths that really don't make sense. So I'm out here trying to find love, trying to find peace, trying to find joy, and I found myself all right, in a domestic violence shelter. Um, after getting married, going through domestic violence, I ended up in the shelter. And that's when God asked me one question, who are you? And I, you know, I was like, I'm nobody. Like nobody wants me. I'm 28 years old in a domestic violence shelter. I can't, I'm a horrible mother. How could I have let this happen and, and let my child watch me? And he said, I didn't ask you who they called you or who you even said you were. I asked you, 
who are you based on who I called you to be? And it was at that moment that I began to see that this world will give you a whole lot of titles that you didn't call for yourself to have. And you have to call yourself what God called you, whether you are operating in that or not, because we live by faith. And by faith, I am whole and I am healed. And even though I didn't feel it in that moment in the shelter, at some point, whether it was a year or 10 years later, it's going to come to fruition because God said, all I have to do is call it and it will be. Wow. So there's so much uh, information in that uh, statement as you're sharing with us the loss of a father, the loss of uh, your identity, the loss of who you uh, saw yourself as. Even though God called you to be great, you saw this person uh, in a different way. And, you know, I think that that's something that is uh, uh, very, very uh, prevalent in just the world period because a lot of things are happening because we've been mishandled. Uh, we've been right. Uh, direct, uh, haven't been directed the right way. The arrow wasn't shot the right way. So it starts to develop things within us. So um, the pure women uh, uh, that you founded, tell us a little bit about that and how that actually manifests. That manifested from, it was, stands for position under righteousness for eternity. And that God promised me that no matter where I was at in life, no matter what my title was, no matter what job I had, that my position in the kingdom, our position as women with him will never change. I love it. Absolutely love it. So, you know, God reassures us of the things. And for those of you who are listening, God is a reassure. He's not just a restore, but he will reassure you. I just want to let you guys know if you're just tuning in, we are in the building with our author, publisher, Brandy Hunt. She's telling us about some things that she's been through as far as losing a father to suicide and losing her identity by going through that and that causing her to spiral out of control and other things to happen. But ultimately, because she trusts God and was able to hear his voice, he was able to restore her to the woman that she is today. So if you're just tuning in, we thank you guys for tuning in. Please, please uh, go and donate. If you're hearing something that's touching your heart, please let us know. Inbox us, follow us, share this feed so that some woman can figure out how to recreate herself. So I want to ask you, Brandy, I know that you are uh, a motivational speaker, you're an activist, you're a leader, you're in the community doing work, you got so much going on in your life. How do you stay grounded? What grounds you? <laughs> That's a good question. <laughs> um, I, I have to do it on purpose. Um, because you're right, I'll get out there and I'll get so amped and I'm just out there and I'll have my body, one, <laughs> will tell me, um, you need to sit down. And then I can't do anything without consulting with God first. Um, and so either whether it's trying to get in a prayer every day, and I say try because we're humans, you know, we, we're external, you know, so I got I got a whole to-do list. So I actually have to put sit down on my to-do list <laughs> or take a nap or any of those things because I'm fueled by helping people. Like that's just in my nature. I want to see, because I remember being that girl. I remember being that woman who felt like I had nothing to give to the world. And so now I have a lot to give to the world. So I want to give it over and over and over. But yeah, so I just remember to stay grounded. I remember why I started, which was, um, you know, my family. I want my daughter to be able to see that no matter what you go through, you can't come out on the other side. So um, family is very, very big to me. Family was big to my father. Um, and so I, I continue his legacy in that. That's awesome. I'm a family girl myself. I love family. I love being around uh, my family. I love sharing with my family. I love being able to minister to my family. So, you know, that's a great uh, gift that God has given women like ourselves to be able to go out there and not only touch other people's lives, but to be effective within your family and let them see your light shine. So I think that's awesome. So um, I, I, I want to say congratulations because I know you recently graduated and got your criminal justice degree. That's awesome. Thank you. Um, so I just definitely want to congratulate you on that. So um, as far as the um, dealing with the hand you were dealt, you said that you spiraled out of control. I know uh, from reading your information, your bio, that you talk about going through rape and molestation. What was that like? Because there's so many women that are dealing with that, but they're dealing with it in a way that it's not, they, they keep it off their lips. So could you share and help those who have been through this? Absolutely. When I was 17 and as um, you're reading the book, um, the gentleman gave me, um, I think it was Mad Dog 2020, which I don't think anybody drinks, but it was gross, but it tasted like juice. 
and he kept giving it to me. And I was like, okay, I like this. Well, all of a sudden, I didn't know where I was at, but I knew I was at home. I was in my own house. And so I remember my sister going to get breakfast. Uh, it was like in the, in, in the night hour, like 12, 1 o'clock. My mom, she, she wanted us to be in the house. So she would let us have people come over and things like that. And so they were, you know, some of them were leaving to go get breakfast. Um, and she was like, do you want something from, I think, Denny's? And I said, no, I'm just going to go to sleep. I think I drunk too much. Well, next thing I know, he's leading me down my hallway to my sister's room. And I was like, no, I don't think this is going to go well. He's like, well, you just need to get in the bed. You know, I'm like, I could have slept on the couch. <laughs> it was, this is my house. And I knew in my mind that this is not about to go good. My mom's in the next room, like down the hall. But something inside of me was like, if you scream, you're going to get in trouble. She's going to be mad at you. And so people don't really, they think, well, why didn't you say something? And why didn't you do this? And I said it, but it was low. Like, because I was, I was drunk. I mean, that's just a fact. And so I'm laying there. And I could feel him taking my clothes off of me. And I'm like, no, stop. And again, my mom's down the hall. If I would have screamed louder, she probably would have heard me. And it was in that moment, tears start coming down my eyes. I was a virgin at the time. And um, just tears started coming down my face. And I was like, please don't do this. He was like, well, you want us to be together. So this is going to be part of our life anyway. You might as well do it. You know, he was just trying to be convinced. I was like, no, I want to wait till I get married because I was raised, um, you know, to, to be celibate and to save myself. And here I am going the opposite direction. I knew this is not what God wants for me. So, and we were raised in church. I, this is what I was raised as. And now the opposite has happened. And I was so mad and, and then it happened. And then when, and I, I fought the whole, the whole entire time, I felt like I was fighting, but again, I was drunk. So there's, you know, what, which, what feels like strength on the inside may not have been that way. So when it ends, my sister comes back and she's like, why is my, why are my sheets changed? And, 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 um, he was like, um, and she was like, but they have blood on them. And she, cause he said, I threw up. He tried to say that I threw up and she was like, well, they have blood on them. And she, she came into my room cause we were in her room and she said, are you okay? And I said, no. And she already knew she knew instantly. And she went, I don't know. She fought him, but I know that she drug him outside and gave, I don't know if you've ever met my sister, <laughs> But she drug him outside and he never came back. And and I can tell you how I felt that night because, I, I mean, just talking about it, I felt worthless. I felt like I wasn't worth respect. I felt like I wasn't um, valued as someone else who says no and they get a okay. I felt like, um, well, God, why would you let this happen to me? I guess you want me to just go out and have sex then because I tried and look what you let happen to me. I blamed it all on God, none on me. Not on the fact that I was drinking alcohol and I shouldn't have been. But those are the things that your natural mind takes you through. And um, the molestation came a few years later. Um, and I did, once, once that happened, I got a new boyfriend. I was a go. I was like, well, what I was waiting for will never happen now. I will never go into my marriage being a virgin. So there will be no reason for me to be celibate. I'm just giving you the inside of what someone's mind can think. So, um, going down to the molestation, it was one of my cousins. Um, he just found me attractive and we were like fourth or fifth cousins. So he felt like it was okay. It wasn't as brutal. And it was again in my own house. And so, um, what, but, but there were other people there at that time. And so when I was trying to fight him off, he was good. You know, he, he backed up because he knew if I call somebody in here, you going down. And the, the next one, which I don't know if you know about this one, was 10 guys jumped on me at, you know, um, at Daytona Beach. I was just walking down the strip, and they grabbed me um, from all corners, and I came out with um, no clothes on. Um, I had on a blue jean skirt, so that was all I had left. But my shirt was gone. My bra was gone. Everything was gone. I was, I was on the street naked. And I just, I didn't understand if I felt like I had a, a, a stamp on my back for bad things to happen. Wow. You know, um, that's such a great testimony um, of the things that you've been through. And um, 
truly, truly, um, as I, you know, was going through your information and uh, some of it was in there, some of it wasn't. But um, however, thank you for sharing and being so transparent because, see, this is the thing, uh, uh, those of you who are out there listening, we need transparency in our life so that we can be set free and restored. If people aren't talking about what they're going through, then you think that you're alone. You think that no one else knows how it feels to go through these things. And believe it or not, the host of this show, myself, I am a product of rape. I am a product of molestation. I am a product of keeping it silent. What happens in the uh, home stays in the home, that type of stuff. And because it wasn't talked about, and if you and you felt like, I, I understand what uh, the author is talking about because you do feel like you can't tell anybody. You do feel like it's your fault. You do feel worthless. You don't feel pretty. You don't feel uh, uh, needed. You don't feel like someone cares about you. So these things, uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, that are listening to us, please understand that God does not mean for us to go through this by ourselves. And God is not responsible. Things happen, and sometimes it's not even about us. It's, it's for the greater good. Sometimes we go through things so that we can be able to, uh, uh, our testimony can set someone else free. Um, and you know that word says that we are overcome by our testimony. We overcome the things that we've been through. So this is such a great, great, great show today, getting the word out there for people who, if you've been raped, if you've been molested, if you've been uh, taken advantage of in any way financially, if somebody's causing you and leading you down a path of drugs or alcohol or things like that, as uh, Brandy stated, she got into all these different things just because of being rejected or feeling rejected or going through the things that she went through with her father. Fathers, please father your daughter. Please tell your daughter something beautiful. Please validate your daughters. Today you see a woman of God who was not validated and because of that it spiraled out of control. These things are not happening to women because they don't have any self-work. It's created. Right. There's a process that gets you to that point. So um, Brandy, um, you told us that your favorite scripture is Philippians 4 through 13, which I completely understand now. You can do all things through Christ who strengthens you. And that's a great scripture. So for those of you who don't know that you can do everything in all things, the author scripture is Philippians 4, 13. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. So I want to get um, into a little bit about your purpose and vision for your ministry. Could you tell us a little bit about that? Absolutely. And I think I stated it um, earlier that I, my heart is for women. I love men too. <laughs> but my heart is for women because everywhere I go, it doesn't matter. The grocery store, church, work, hurt. It's all I see on people's face. And it, they can have a smile, but I can see so far past that smile. And I know where it comes from. It comes from not having an identity, not having a purpose, and feeling unloved. And so the mission of Pure Woman is just to be be just that, to be a catalyst, to be able to show you where it all went wrong. Because unless you deal with the hands you've been dealt, literally, unless you go back and say, I forgive you, because that's the way you deal with it. I forgive you, God, the people that did it, even myself. I had to go back and say, stop beating yourself up so much. You didn't do all of this. You did some of it, and I'll take the blame, and I'll, I'll you know, we'll say, dust your shoulders off and keep going. But it's not as deep as we make it sometimes. Some people are really going through some very harsh things. Rejection, abandonment, and all those things, they come out in sickness. They come out in your relationships. And I can see when a woman is going back to a man and slapping her up against the head, I ask her first, where's your daddy? Where's your mom? Because sometimes it can come from mom. And so the, the point of the ministry is just, for one, to lead people to Christ. That's my mission in the world, to lead you to Christ. And then because your destiny won't be fulfilled without Christ. You might do a lot of great things, but the one thing he has you here for, you'll never identify it not being connected to him. So I connect women to, to the real Christ, not church, because we can church up something, but to a real God that really loves you, that really cares about your destiny, that will come and see about you. I remember, I, I remember hearing God tell me so clearly, I'm coming to see about you. And I was like, thank you, because, <laughs> because I need some help. <laughs> you know, so, but that's the mission of um, a pure woman is to make sure that women fulfill their destiny and their calling and their purpose while they're here on, life, um, on this earth, in this life. Wow, and I state that because for those of you who are just joining in, again, we have author, publisher, Brandy Hunt in the building. We're so happy to have her on the show today. So if you're just tuning in, we're talking about her book, uh, Dealing with the Hand That I Was Dealt. And, and in this book, it describes how 
her father uh, committed suicide and then the spiraling from that rejection of her feeling unloved by her own father caused her to uh, pretty much go through and walk through a lot of different doors in her life. So um, pretty much uh, listening to you give your testimony um, and sharing and knowing how you kind of feel with some of the things you have been through, because as I stated before, um, I have, I don't really share a lot. I usually kind of let the uh, people that I interview talk about what's going on with them, but this really resonates with me because it is exactly who I am, um, the things that I've been through. But you can be restored and you can overcome Absolutely. things. God can restore you to a place that you even forgive those people who have wronged you. You even forgive them to the point that you can say, hey, and bye to them. That's yeah. how our God is because he is a restorer. So I am so elated. Thank you so much for taking out time to be on the show with us. So before you go, if you could just give us a little bit of nuggets to encourage the women of God, tell them if you could, what are the first steps you would take to get out of a bad situation, whether it be being raped, molested, or just feeling rejected? Okay. So this is my, this is my suggestion. You have to deal with the pain of your life. The people the anger, the insecurities, and the negativity that life has dealt you. And by dealing, we, we're not talking about going forward, we're talking about going backward. And you have to face that thing head on. And I'll say this as well. Fear is a liar. You cannot walk in with God and be in fear. It is going to hurt to have to go back to some of those places. Some of those people may not even be alive or in your life, but you have to go back and close your eyes and face that situation that you win. In the end, you win. At the end of the Bible, it shows us that we win. And so you have to go back with a winner's mindset and not a defeated mentality. We have to know that in every situation that I was in, I was winning, whether it looked like I was winning or not. Like you said, it may not have been for me. I, we wouldn't be sitting here talking about this. I wouldn't have been able to save a 15-year-old girl who read my book that was in a bad relationship already at 15. So if you're already if you're, you're in a bad relationship now, the first thing I would tell you is get a counselor because some people can't just get wake up and pack. You may have a man that's standing at the door that's ready to shoot you. So I would never tell anybody, just wake up and pack. Get you a counselor. I worked for Safe Harbor for a little while. Call a local shelter. Somebody They have counselors available to walk you through this process if it's really that bad, if it's a bad situation. If you just in a bad relationship, like you're arguing, you don't like him anymore, you get the choice to leave. You don't have to stay because he loves you, because you are love, period. That's what God was basically showing is that you already are the thing that you're looking for. So that is my suggestion. Know that in the beginning, you win, you're already loved, and whatever you've been through, Jesus Christ bore it on the cross. All shame, all negativity, everything that we've gone through, he bore all that, and the blood of Jesus Christ covers it all. Amen. Amen. So we're going to go ahead and wrap things up. Brandy, if you could tell us quickly how we could reach out to you to get your book and to be a part of your uh, ministry or follow you in any way. Absolutely. Um, I'm on all social media. I'm Brandy, the author. If you need to look me up specifically, if that doesn't come up, Brandy Hunt, Brandy with a Y. My email is published, P-U-B-L-I-S-H-U-0-0 at gmail.com. For those people that want to publish their story, don't know where to start, please give me a call. I would love to help you. And my phone number is 864-305-6518. All right. Thank you guys again for tuning in to WYTV7, Christian Broadcasters Network, Inc. Like I said once before, please, if something has uh, been said or done on the show today that has touched your heart, let us know. Please reach out to us, follow us, share this message so that others can get the information that's needed. I want to give you the National uh, Domestic uh, Abuse Hotline number, which is 1-800-799-7233. If you've been abused in any way, molested, raped, if you just feel trapped, Please reach out that someone might be able to help you. And remember, Philippians 4 and 13, you can do all things through Christ who strengthens you. Have an awesome, awesome day. Good evening.
restore your life through laughter.